Hello, Facebook Live. Marcus here. What's happening, everybody? It is Wednesday, and Wednesday morning, about 10.45 in the morning, 10.42, and I am... It's Wednesday. Jamie and I are technically off today. We're back to being closed on Wednesdays. So if you're planning on coming in tonight, uh, we are closed. I'm just going onto my computer here, and I am going to share this in another group. So I want to talk about vodkas today. Um, because we have a, an amazing event coming up this Saturday night. Uh, we're doing a, a virtual hangout. Michael Davidson, owner of Black Infusions uh, Vodka Company, is going to be on with us, walking us through cocktails. Chris Jackson is going to be playing music. I'm going to talk all about this in a few minutes. And I'm going to talk about the difference between vodkas. And one of the most disappointing things about vodkas that I learned 18, 17 years ago when we opened. And um, some people don't care. I actually care about uh, care about uh, what I'm going to tell you about vodkas. Uh, we've tried to stay true to this over the course of the years, but it's so hard and so confusing to figure out uh, what vodkas are legit or not. So uh, let's see, share in a group. I'm going to share it into the uh, Elmville Warsing What to Do. Uh, Ulster eateries and whatever group other groups you're in what's cooking who's cooking those groups as well um, So all right, so vodka We opened in 2003 into 2003 uh, when we first opened the the you know Gray goose was really on the upswing gray goose. We watched the price just keep going and going and going um, Gray goose uh, Smirnoff was a good quality Value vodka. Um, there were Stol Stoli was really big back then. So Stoli and Grey Goose were the two big brands back in 2004 and reopened. I mean, that's what everybody was drinking. So when we first opened, I brought in a couple of small craft distilled products like Hangar One at the time, which was a very small brand back then, back in 2004, 2005. And 60 Minutes actually did a thing on vodkas and gave Hangar One like, like, Named them like best vodka back then uh, against all these other all these other vodkas, but in the realm of buying flavored vodkas, flavored vodkas like orange vodka, lemon vodka, vanilla vodka, raspberry vodka, strawberry vodka, bubblegum vodka, cotton candy vodka, all these outrageous flavors. There's one common denominator in the majority of the brands out there, including Stoli, include, including Absolute, including Grey Goose, there's a common denominator that's out there is, if it says orange vodka, chances are there's no real orange in the vodka. It's all done with extracts. It's all done with chemical flavorings. It's all done with <coughs> quote unquote natural flavors. So back in the beginning, I said, wow, this is like, this is like misleading. You're not allowed to do that with food, by the way. Um, a lot of truffle oil companies got in trouble. There were class action lawsuits. They got in trouble because they would write truffle oil, and there'd be no truffle in the oil. So that is one of the biggest things with uh, with truffle oil is these companies are doing. I think some companies are even still still doing that, and they've gotten in trouble, or they've, they've done it until, until recently. So our friend Rosario would know that. He's the one who makes um, the organic truffle oil that we sell, that we've been using for years. Um, so... Um, the Rosario Certified Organic Rosario Truffle Oil. That's what we've been using for years. There's actually truffles in here. There's real truffles in here. So, uh, but a lot of companies you buy uh, won't even have truffle in there. So same thing with vodka. You'll buy orange vodka, and the vodka has never ever seen an orange. The vodka, you know, it, it's never seen a blueberry. It's never seen a strawberry. Of course, it's never seen cotton candy and bubble gum, right? When you buy some of those other flavors. So very in the very beginning. I was on a quest back in 2004, 2005 to find vodkas that had real fruit in them. Real fruit. Charbet was one of the first brands I was introduced to. And Jamie and I went there in 2009. Uh, we sat on their porch, great people. And um, we, um, we drank with them, uh, had a great time in Napa. They're up in Napa. And Charbet, see the color of that, folks? That is, that's the real fruit in there. This is grapefruit. That's the real fruit. Derek, our friend up at, up in Hudson, New York, that's his raspberry vodka. That is real, real raspberry making that color. Not, not some, not some food coloring, not some extract. 
he's putting real, his own raspberries or raspberries from the local farm there into his core vodka at Hudson, at, um, Harvest Distilling. Uh, Derek's a great guy. Derek's gonna be on our phone call this week on our hangout because we're gonna do a, another hangout with Derek at some point from Harvest Distilling. He makes amazing Apple Jacks, like, like kick butt Apple Jacks. Uh, he makes a peach one. Uh, he makes a cherry one. Uh, he makes a um, peach cherry, um, probably missing. Of course, a classic apple one. And we sell these here. Uh, we have these in our on our shelves to sell bottles of these to go. So these are awesome. Uh, his cherry is... The cherry one, I think, is the winner in this batch. We're gonna, So Derek's gonna be on our phone call this week, on our hangout this week, on this Saturday night, seeing what we're doing and, and hanging out with us because we're gonna do one with him soon down the road as well. So this Saturday night, Chris Jackson, uh, musician Michael Davidson from Black Infusions, now, Black, uh, Black Infusions, you're going to come in, pick up your cocktail kits. Everything will be up in jars lined up. I suggest you just buy a bottle of this and the apricot. You're going to love this stuff, and we'll give you a taste of it. You're going to love this stuff so you can keep making it. We're going to make an apricot spritz. We're going to make a, a peach fig uh, uh, punch. Uh, we're going to give you some merlette, which is, not, which is not peach schnapps. It's real peach liqueur. Um, again, real peach liqueur. Schnapps are flavored too, folks. Um, triple sec. Triple sec is flavored. Um, really cheap stuff. And I see that Michael just joined us. Hi, Michael. We're talking about uh, this Saturday night. I'm talking about uh, um, vodka, uh, vodkas. And Michael can probably chime in on this because um, Michael, uh, Michael makes real fruit vodkas, folks. So back to this disappointing thing. Back in 2005, back in 2005 when we started buying flavored vodkas, I was like, this is insane. Like, you're telling me that I'm buying stuff like Stoli and, and Absolute and the Citron vodkas and fruit's never even been in them. And that was the reality of it. So there's very, very, very few vodka companies out there that actually only use the fruit because some companies will use fruit, but they're not nearly getting enough extract, enough flavoring from, from the fruit. So they add in, it's just a token to do it, to, to throw blueberries in a batch and say, okay, we tried and here we go. It's like, and then they throw in the blueberry extract. Believe it or not, in the restaurant realm, a lot of chefs do the same thing when they make soup. They'll make chicken stock. They'll make, they'll do a half-assed job on making chicken stock. I've seen this, I've seen this so many times before we had the restaurant. I've seen this so many places. They'll make a weak chicken stock, take all this time to make this weak chicken stock and then take an MSG flavoring of chicken stock like Miners or something or Nor and scoop out this paste and throw it in the chicken stock and be like, okay, our chicken stock's done. I'm like, like, just take time and make the product, make the chicken stock to begin with right the first time and you won't have to use the flavorings. Make the lobster stock right the first time and you won't have to throw in chemicals to boost your lobster stock. It's possible to make this right the first time. And I was so frustrated as a young chef seeing this because back then I was like, this, just, this isn't right either. So this is what vodka companies do if they're using real fruit, most companies. They throw in fruit as a token and they say, okay, now that we put the fresh fruit in, we infused it, we're gonna throw in some extracts, some synthetic, some natural flavors. And talk about that. So when it comes to buying vodka that is truly vodka with real fruit only as the flavoring, it's very rare. You can find them, very rare, but you can find them. Charbet is a great company for that. I like Charbet, um, great people there. Um, Derek, right here. So, um, I don't have any green bar flavors, but green bar used to make a great vanilla vodka. They don't make it anymore. Um, that is just, was just vanilla. In fact, we have a rum. Let me grab this rum. Because the rum is what we use for our, Jimmy uses for her espresso vodka. So, and you can see, this is a, this is a local rum from, um, from uh, Vermont. And you can see it's not crystal clear. Um, it's vanilla rum and it's the real vanilla in here. And there's no other, there's no boosters, no flavoring enhancers. It's rum and vanilla. So, um, Michael, if you can, um, I think Michael's dropping some comments. 
So Michael's saying just booze and dried fruit, no artificial ingredients, flavorings, coloring, sugar, the real deal. So Michael's product here, black fig from Black Infusions, his black fig and his apricot is the real fruit. He's telling you right, he's the, he's the producer of this. He's on, he's on this live right now. Um, and he's gonna be joining us this Saturday night, 25 bucks. You'll be with him, Chris Jackson playing the Beatles, the Kinks, um, some Tom Petty, some cool, cool classic rock. Jamie and I will give you all the ingredients to make cocktails. Michael will be talking all about this. You're drinking the real product, folks. You're not drinking synthetics. This is, he, now he's, he's even telling you what, he's, what, the figs, what, the, what the figs are actually going into it right now. He's dropping comments. Thank you, Michael, I appreciate that. Um, folks, you'll be surprised. Like, this is something that not m normal people think about because um, you think about, you know, just ordering like Grey Goose Citron or something, any of these Citron vodkas, and you think, oh yeah, there's, there's, there's real stuff in it. It's, it's, if there is real stuff, it's not enough. And it's just, you know, so I was um, in Poughkeepsie one time at the, at the, at the food packer there. There's a, a food packer there where you can go and basically get anything co-packed for you. You can take ingredients there, you can take your staff there, they, or they have a staff. And if you wanted to make barbecue sauce, if you wanted to make barbecue sauce and brand your own brand and go there, they would do everything for you, put it in a bottle. I'm not, I'm not even sure if they still exist. This happens in the food world too, folks. So I was there. Um, Hoboken Eddie's, is that, is that the brand? Hoboken Eddie's um, um, barbecue sauce. So he has this whole line of barbecue sauce, right? So every year he puts out his homegrown, homegrown, um, where it's stuff from his garden. So you would think that the product being made in there, and he charges a lot more for it, like a lot, the price difference is a lot more. You would think that all those products are from his garden or from, you know, grown locally. I saw this, I witnessed this. It's his regular stuff, his totally regular batch, where he comes in with peppers or whatever, the peppers from his garden, two boxes, and throws them in a vat with hundreds of gallons of, of product, hundreds of gallons of product, throws them in, and there you go. And he calls it homegrown, his homegrown, and charges so much more for it. It's, it, and when I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, it happens in food, it happens in vodkas, it happens in the booze world, it, 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 it happens in truffle oil. This is, this, this is the uphill battle we're facing when people, when these, consu when, when these companies don't do the real thing and they're still charging. Let me tell you something, Grey Goose is not giving you a discount for them using some kind of extract that's not the real, they're not giving you a discount for that. They're charging you more than ever. All these, these big brands, are, you're paying for all the advertising dollars that go into it. So they can keep, they can keep putting out a, an unnatural um, boosted flavor enhanced product, not the real deal. So when you, if you're really concerned about the vodka you're buying and the flavorings, you can always ask me, um, start with these. This is a great choice. Uh, I'm, folks, you can buy bottles of each of these from us. You don't have to just buy the kit from us. If you wanna buy the full bottles, we have them, they're here for sale. Uh, you're gonna love these. What I suggest is when you come in to pick up your kit, we'll taste you on these vodkas. We'll give you a taste of them. And if you want the whole bottle, you buy the whole bottle and it's easy to do. So this week you'll get, you'll get small portions of the Merlet for the peach. You'll get a bottle of Prosecco. You'll get, you'll get everything lined up to make the cocktails this Saturday night at home. It's gonna be a great event. Um, the Facebook, our Facebook banner is that today. It's on our website. It's on Facebook. We have an event, 647-3000. You make a, um, uh, make a reservation, call us and uh, pick up all your products. Uh, so uh, Liz is saying here, I personally don't like any of the flavored vodkas, um, two fufu vodkas, yeah. I am an old school bartender, uh, absolutely old school, awesome, awesome. So one of the reasons we don't buy, like there's a brewery in upstate New York, Southern Tier Brewery, and they make like this creme brulee beer. They make these. They make these outrageous flavored beers. I've never bought them for the restaurant because I don't think that they're taking real creme brulee and putting it into the beer to make the beer and getting the flavoring from that. I'm almost pretty sure, without knowing, but I'm almost, I would almost venture to say that it's probably with an extract to put those flavors in there. So people have said to us over the years, "Oh, the creme brulee from Southern Tier is so good," or this from. 
But I'm, it's just, I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in, in things that are done like that. And folks, it's hard not to buy food or booze that has these, these flavorings on them because a lot of companies do this more than you think. Um, that's just what happens. Uh, it, 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 it's an easy way to get them around them. Now you can actually buy an organic extract. You can actually, they can actually take like cucumbers, for example, cook them down, distill them, uh, uh, you know, extract them, make a cucumber flavoring, and then you take that and add it to the vodka. That's one thing. You can actually do that. You can buy from Frontier organic raspberry flavor. You can buy things that are certified organic. But again, this is more expensive than just buying a so-called flavoring and adding it to the to the end product. Um, so chances are it's more that. And then of course, um, you're dealing with all kinds of added sugars and stuff in there. Uh, glycerin goes into it. So there's a lot, it's, 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 it's just not what you think it is. This is what you think it is. It's vodka and real fruit. Michael just dropped, Michael on here just dropped what he puts in there. He dropped the types of figs that go in there. Just booze and dried fruit. No artificial ingredients, flavorings, colorings, sugar. The real deal. Vodka and grapefruit infusion. Charbet, right? Vanilla rum. Real vanilla. Look at the tinge on there. It's not, it's not, it's not clear. It's a little cloudy. Um, Mad River makes an amazing, amazing rye that we have here. We have their, their it's, it's, it's a roasted rye and the, the essence of like, like cacao comes out and chocolate comes, it's an amazing rye, it's one of our favorite ryes. And um, they're a great distillery up in, up in Vermont, um, Mad River. Is it Vermont, are they in Vermont? They're in Vermont. I hope they're in Vermont because I said they're in Vermont. They might be in New Hampshire. Vermont, they're in Vermont. So, um, Derek's products, Derek's products, totally real. Distills vodka from apples and then throws in black raspberries in there. Totally real product. Um, this will even change coloring because uh, it's not stabilized. Uh, so if you take this home uh, in, in two months, three months, six months down the road, you'll notice that it's not the same color as when you first brought it home. It will fade a little bit. So it's because it's a natural product. So that's the biggest disappointing thing about, about vodkas to me since we've been open. I learned that many years ago. And like I gave the example of, of chefs making chicken stock. They literally make chicken stock, go through all the motions of making chicken stock, and the stock is half ass, and then they take miner's beef base, which has yeast extract, all these autolyzed yeast extract, all these other funky chems or, or questionable ingredients, and then they throw that in to their weak chicken stock, to their half ass chicken stock, and like they've made some homemade chicken stock. It would have just been better off to, to not even gone through the labor of doing all that and just throw that in to begin with, right? So that's how I feel about that. It's either all or nothing. So um, if you're gonna do it, do it right. Um, Michael, thanks for being on with us. Hopefully some of you will get to join us this Saturday night. Uh, again, Chris Jackson playing music like the Beatles, the Kinks, some Tom Petty. Uh, hopefully soon we'll be able to have you eat outside. Hopefully soon. Um, Jamie and I got some big projects we're doing outside. I'm trying to get a patio put in back there, uh, you know, the floor. I'm trying to get a nice waterfall put in back there. I've been working on that yesterday. I'm trying to move the garden around, trying to do some things things out there. Uh, got some patio heaters coming in this week. I think they'll be here this week, by the end of the week. Nice patio heaters. We ordered some Crown Verities from Canada. Um, not the not the not the uh, not the regular heaters you're gonna see like at, at Home Cheapo or things like that. These because you can go walk in the Home Cheapo and buy stuff for 150 bucks. These patio heaters. These are really awesome, solid, high BTU, well made stainless steel patio heaters uh, that we bought from Crown Verity. Looked at a couple different distributors that sell their products here in the U.S. and um, they're on their way from Canada. Really super excited about that. We have the pillar one coming. Uh, which is that pillar, which uh, um, you'll see it when it comes. We're going to stick it out front. It's going to be great. So um, let's see. Uh, Michael's also saying only 60 proof, which allows it to marry well with other spirits uh, in a cocktail. Very true. So 60%. Thanks for pointing that out, Michael. So folks, we're off today. It's Wednesday. I know we were open the last eight Wednesdays. Uh, nine Wednesdays because we didn't know what was happening in the very beginning when COVID first hit out. We thought, we literally thought, open up, sell everything we have in house because they're going to shut us down and we're not going to allow us to do anything, but we're deemed essential because we do take out. We didn't think we were going to even make that. So we were like, okay, they're going to shut us down totally, sell every ingredient we have in the place because we don't want to be that restaurant that closes 
and throws everything in the freezer and then opens up in eight weeks or whenever we thought we would be able to open and pulling all this stuff that's packed into freezers out and opening. Um, that's been a lot of, I've heard this from many people, from several people saying, well, Marcus, you know, that restaurant was closed for, for, for six weeks or four weeks. You know, what they do with their food? Do they freeze it all? I don't really know what they do with their food, but that is a common practice in the restaurant industry. Not saying that frozen food is bad because we, we love frozen fish because it's fresher than fresh. I've done many videos on that and I could do more videos on that. But when you take salmon, line catch in Alaska, and within hours, flash freeze it, process it and flash freeze it within hours of catching it, has zero microbes, zero microbial growth. It, has, it's, it, hasn't, been, it hasn't had the chance to hit rigor mortis yet. It hasn't aged yet. When you catch salmon in Alaska and don't freeze it, you catch it, you ship it to Seattle. You could, first it goes back to the dock. Then it goes to Seattle. Then from Seattle, then it goes to New York. Then it goes to the Fulton Fish Market. Then a distributor picks it up. And then they deliver it to us here. And then we, the next day we get to cleaning it or doing something to it. It's already six, seven, eight days old. That's not fresh anymore, folks. Fresh, when, you, when you're buying unfrozen, people automatically think that never frozen seafood is fresh. It's not fresh. Fresh Super fresh is frozen when it has zero microbes and they freeze it before it hits rigor mortis. That's fresh food. A freezer helps you maintain fresh food longer. So things have changed in the freezing industry since 30, 40, 50 years ago. Things have drastically changed. They blast freeze these at like negative 80. Um, it happens so quick, it doesn't rupture the cells. One thing that people don't understand is if you take salmon at home or any kind of fish at home and stick it into your home freezer, your home freezer is not designed to freeze things. It's designed to keep things frozen. So it's designed for when you go to the store and buy something frozen and bring it home and from frozen to frozen. It's not designed to take something from room temperature or even 40 degrees like a piece of fish out of the cooler and put it into the freezer and freeze it. It's not designed to freeze things. It will freeze it, but it's such a low, slow, drawn out process that it ruptures the cells and that's where you start getting grainy, dry seafood, spongy textures. That's where that starts happening because it's a slow process. It's too slow. It's not happening rapid enough in a blast freezer. Blast freezing is the way to do that. And now your home freezers are just not set up to do that. Even freezers in the restaurant industry are not set up to do that. I've had the luxury in Colorado um, to have a blast freezer in one of the country clubs I worked at. We had a blast freezer in the basement. It was always negative 30. It was insane. Like insane, insane. Um, it was down in the basement and that's where our deep freeze was. And if we wanted, so we had a freezer upstairs, which, you know, kept at zero, negative 10, it hovered in there. But if we wanted to freeze something, all my cooks knew you went downstairs on a sheet tray, you'd line up berries, you'd line up whatever, and that's where you'd pop it into that freezer underneath the circulating fans to blow on it and blast freeze it and things would be frozen like instantly at negative 30. It was an amazing blast freezer we had. Um, I've never had a freezer like that in any of the places I've worked again. So, but uh, came in handy. So, um, the disadvantage of a blast freezer like that is nobody wants to go in there and clean it because it's super cold. So the freezer would tend to tend to build up boxes and uh, and stock more than more than the other freezers because it was too darn cold to go into. All right, folks, join us this Saturday. Stop in, um, pick up um, pick up your kits, pick up the whole bottle. Uh, Michael just dropped a, a mess, uh, another comment. Uh, with his email on it. Folks, you're never going to, you're never gonna go and get the owner, they probably don't even exist, the owner of Grey Goose, any of these big brands, to get on a Facebook Live like this and drop comments and care about his product. Tito won't even do that from Tito's Vodka, okay? Um, too big of a company, independently owned, but way too big of a company. Um, so, this is, a, this is a great treat. This is why Jamie and I do business with small independence. Because Michael, the owner of this company, is on this live, right, right here with you, watching with you guys, dropping comments, dropping his email address for you to send him any questions. Grey Goose will never do that, Tito's will never do that, Absolute will never do that, Stoli will never do that. Maybe the sales rep will, who covers the region, will do that. But they're just a sales rep. Michael is the owner of this company and doing it. That is the joy of doing business with independent companies. Local's great, local's awesome, all right? Derek's local, local's great, local's awesome. Independent is amazing as well. And if you can find all that in one picture, in, 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 one, in one, that's amazing. But a lot of people, because they don't buy local, think, well, I'm buying it from, from California, I'm buying it from France, you know? 
you can still find an independent company. You can still find an independent distillery in France. You can still find an independent distillery in Italy. The Grappa we buy, both, both uh, the Grappa we buy, uh, the Nardini. Um, Antonio's a great guy, a fantastic guy. We've hung out with him many times. Uh, we spent the day. In fact, on our VIP wine vacations, Antonio said, Marcus, when you bring your group to Bassano, to Northern Italy, and you come to this region, we're gonna take all 20 of your guests and they're coming to my house and I'm gonna cook for them, all right? What kind, you're not gonna get that with another big spirit company. They're not gonna do that. He goes, I want all your guests at my house and I'm gonna cook. And a friend of ours, a really good friend of Antonio Nardini's lives here in Kerhonkson. Um, and uh, she walked in by chance one day and saw his products on the shelf and said, I don't see too many places with that kind of Nargini selection. And I said, yeah, we love the products. And, uh, and uh, I go, how do you know them? She goes, well, I'm friends with the, the owner. She goes, I'm friends with the owner. And we had just gotten back and we had dinner with Antonio the week before in, in Bassano in Italy. And I said, you know Antonio? She goes, you know, do you know Antonio? I said, I just had dinner with Antonio. Literally like five days ago, I just had dinner with Antonio. She goes, here in New York? I said, no, in Bassano. She goes, oh my gosh, you're kidding me. So, um, and I told her the story how he wants our guests to come to his place. She goes, Marcus, take him up on that. He had, basically has a castle. He has a castle in Northern Italy. If he's inviting you over to his house, take, take him up on it. It is amazing. You'll have an amazing time at his house. So when we plan our VIP trip, VIP winery vacations, we're getting back in the realm of the travel. We're now talking to the vineyards again. All the vineyards are opening up by September in Italy to, to welcome travelers again. So we are going to go full force uh, here very soon and start promoting our tours again, our VIP tours. Uh, VIP Facebook page is still active. The VIP Instagram page is still very active. VIP Winery Vacations. We post uh, a couple times a week on there. Uh, we just posted some great pictures today of Reggiano cheese. Um, Reggiano cheese is a, uh, is a classic Italian cheese that's made in Emilia Romagna. And we posted a picture of a very small operation, very small operation. I think they had like 12 vats, 12 copper vats. You can only fire them up once a day. Jamie and I were there in the morning when the cows, when the milk was coming in from the cows, they were firing up, they were curdling it. They went to the aging room. Um, so whenever we go to Emilia Romagna with our VIP, that's gonna definitely be part of it because we do more than we do more than wine. We just don't drink wine all day. We eat too. You have to have wine and food together. Um, and of course, we give time for people to shop and everything. But our next trip to, to Southern Italy is going to be amazing. In we're planning on going in November. In November, there's still green grass. Gardens are still green. Um, there's still leaves on trees. It's amazing. Uh, in southern Italy, in Apulia, how green and lush it is in November. So we're going to be planning uh, many more trips. Um, if you own a restaurant and you want to do a trip with your restaurant, Jamie and I will will walk you through the whole process, help you do it, go in business with you, um, and and help you do that if you, if you own a restaurant or if you even if you even if you have a group and you want to do a fundraiser, we can do our charity VIP group where we donate ten thousand dollars back to your charity. You ground up twenty people. We do the whole itinerary. We join you on the trip. We take care of you. We wine and dine you. And then we'll donate $10,000 back to your organization. Um, so uh, we also do those as well. We started, we, we had big plans and all of a sudden COVID hit. We had all these things lined up and then all of a sudden we're like, oh no, no, no. And people were afraid to travel, of course, uh, for obvious reasons. People weren't willing to buy plane tickets. People weren't willing to look forward into that. People weren't willing to advertise and we weren't either. We were not either trying to advertise and go to Italy with us while COVID's happening. So, but now that hopefully we're through the tail end of it, things are reopening up again. Italy's reopened again. Um, Vineyards, vineyards are, are open again in Italy. Uh, they're prepared uh, for guests. They're planning trips again. So now we're getting back into that, that phase slowly. But VIP winery vacations on Instagram and on Facebook. Follow us there. You'll see a lot of our own pictures. We grab some pictures from some from some other places, sites and everything, some great pictures, but we'll we do post a lot of our own pictures that Jamie and I have actually taken personally. And one of the things that we're gonna do that I just did, I ordered a bunch of canvas prints yesterday because when you come to the restaurant and sit down and eat and you order a bottle of Falesco Vitiano, I want you to sit at this booth here and have a picture right there of, of Falesco, the vineyard, like you're on the vineyard. When you come and sit up at the table here and you order a bottle of Tondinia from Spain and you sit here and look, that's their cellar there. That's their cobwebs. That's their cellar. I want you to be able to sit at the table, drink the bottle of wine, and have a, an amazing view of that vineyard that you're drinking during your, um, 
uh, during your, your visit here with us when we reopen. So that's part of our, it's part of another one of our goals, another one of our ideas. I ordered a bunch of uh, canvases yesterday to start hanging up in the restaurant so you can have that experience. Same thing when you come over here, um, I don't know if many of you know this, but this is our beef farm right here. This is where our, our uh, pasture raised beef comes from on, on our burgers. So if you sit here and you're eating a burger, that's the ranch, there are no cows in there. I just got a picture of the field there. I, I took that picture. Uh, by the way, uh, pre-fall there, the leaves are starting to turn. So if you're eating a burger, that's where the beef came from, from that farm in Dutchess County. So I wanna have more of an experience like that here in the restaurant. Uh, you're eating the Reggiano cheese. There's the picture of the guys making the Reggiano place that we go to, that we buy from. So it's just more of that connection, that farm to table connection, whether it's local or abroad. So that's a situation with that, super exciting. A lot of, a lot of really a lot of awesome, exciting things going on here in Aroma Time. Jamie and I are just, Jamie and I have really taken this last, 10, 11 weeks to really think outside the box more and execute things more. And now that we have staff back, we're really getting a lot of work done. We're really executing a lot more. Um, we're painting, we're doing a bunch of things. We're, we're doing, I'm, I'm building a waterfall in back. It's gonna be really, really cool. I can't wait to have that done. I'm super excited about that. So um, yeah, lots of really cool things happening here. So Jamie and I have really taken those, this last thing this, since March to really take advantage of how can we move the business forward? What are you looking for? What are some safety things you're gonna be looking for once you, once you come back? And we know that being outside is gonna be very important for a lot, of, a lot of patrons, a lot of guests. That's why we bought a bunch of patio heaters so you can eat outside and be comfortable. That's why I'm reworking the garden so we can have more tables out there and building a waterfall so it's more comfortable out there and there's more ambience. And I'm even trying to, to um, be able to cook on top of our, our, our grill, our, our fire pit out there. I'm having a, a friend who was welding and we're looking at a bunch of different ideas right now, what we can weld out there. So if we wanna cook on there as well and do that, I ordered a bunch of more butane burners, really high powered butane burners so I can cook more outside. Um, we painted the smoker, so the smoker's looking fantastic, really fantastic. So uh, Jamie and I have really taken this time to, uh, to, to move the menu forward, move everything. We, we lowered prices on a lot of things. We, um, more of a tapas style menu. We made our burger bigger, gave it a pretzel bun, really exciting stuff. Jamie and I are gonna go on a bike ride now before it rains. Um, hopefully it's not raining yet. We're gonna go on a bike ride, probably a 20, 25 miler, 30 miler, get out and enjoy. And that's it, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Really, really appreciate your support. Michael, thank you for uh, logging on to this uh, Facebook Live with us. And Michael, again, is joining us this Saturday with his Black black Infusion products, uh, the Black Fig Vodka and the Apricot Vodka. Um, he'll be on the Zoom call with us. Chris Jackson will be playing the Beatles, the Kinks, Tom Petty, and others. And uh, Jamie and I, you come get your kits and you make cocktails at home, and we have a fantastic virtual hangout. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Talk to you later, and stay tuned for Jamie's happy hour later. Even though we're closed, she'll probably still do a happy hour, hour a day. She does them five days a week minimum, and um, sometimes she'll get them done on weekends. So she should be on around 4 o'clock, and maybe she can make something out of a Black Fig product again. Uh, so to keep talking and hyping up our event. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you later.